you are the president of uh, the Nigerian um, Students Organization over there. Um, right. In your view, um, when you when you received the, the warning from the federal government concerning um, Nigerian students living in northern Cyprus, what was your reaction exactly? Could you give paint us a picture exactly what really happens over there? I was really disappointed, uh, not only me, actually. Uh, and a lot of Nigerians living here were very disappointed that something like that has to come up, and especially that it's coming up from, uh, you know, a, a very high-profile uh, government official. So we were very disappointed that we were told that there was an attempt to blacklist universities to work So it's a, a feeling of disappointment from all of us. But the federal government did say that there have been about 100 Nigerian students that have been killed. And if you are the president of the Nigerian students over there, are you aware of these killings? Like I said in my statement, there has never, we will never have up to 20. Since the time Nigerians uh, started coming here from time immemorial, I mean, Nigerians started coming in early, 20, early 2000s, until this point, there has never been death that is more than 20 from our record. In your view, as a government official, could you tell us what reports you've gotten, either confirming or not confirming what he has just said? Yeah, let me first of all state that uh, I studied in North Cyprus. I did my uh, master's and doctorate degree there. And I was, you know, previously the president of Nigerian students in the Turkish zone too. Uh, in all my years, uh, as much as all the countries that I've traveled to, I said this in, in the report that I gave last week, and I'll still say it again. Uh, I, I haven't seen any place that is as safe as Northern Cyprus hmm. yet. Because in Northern Cyprus, people people sleep with their doors open. I haven't, uh, I mean, you don't hear gunshot. There are no robbery cases. There are no, you know, uh, uh, violent cases in this. Uh, because it's, it's quite a small island, though. So uh, just like uh, Comrade Jude has said, uh, there is no such thing of 100 people dying in North Cyprus. I mean, if you're saying that 100, we, I think uh, there are just about 8,000 plus Nigerians living in North Cyprus, and 100, uh, 100 is a very significant number. How can 100 people die? And just like he said, uh, which I can rightly confirm, I don't think there are more than 18 people who have died. And these have been natural causes. Tell us your own perspective on this, because we're having this issue understanding which, whose side should we be on? We're just be on the side of Nigerians who don't deserve to be killed anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask um, the union president, is it even right that 18 students have died and there has been no investigation? Nothing has happened. Nobody has done anything. Personally, for me, I said hundreds. And the hundreds, I'm talking of black. Hmm. You know, majority, every time you say black, you say Nigerian. Yeah. What about those from East Kenya and all that that have complained? Now, we are working with the Turkish embassy here. We're working in the Eastern Post. And we'll, you see, the problem is that a lot of times you can't even report anything. Like, Obi, Obi um, I said in this book, you have to keep your mouth shut. Oh. You have to keep your mouth shut. And then all the figures we have received, how come they died the same way? Hello, I, I need to confirm something for what you're saying. Are you suggesting mm. that many of these Nigerian students are recruiting others from Nigeria and they are somewhat I'm, on the payroll of these Turkish governments? Is that what you're suggesting? Obviously. I'm sorry. The, the agents come here and they yeah, use agents. Nigerians. Let me put you on hold for a second, madam. Let me bring in the human rights activist, Fidelis Shuriwe. Uh, sir, are you there? I know you lost your nephew who died. Um, in Northern Cyprus. Could you tell us what happened and what work you've done so far to um, dissuade Nigerians from going to Northern Cyprus? Before 2013, my family and I had never had any interest in the obscurity called Northern Cy Cyprus. It never commanded any att att attraction. Until my nephew, a 20-year-old boy, Gabriel Suluwe, went to that, that country in charge of Western education. He was a student of electrical electronics and engineering. And the boy was said to have been knocked down by a Turkish woman. And the woman who killed him, till today, the Turkish authority, the people in North Cyprus did not tell this family, did not reveal the identity of this woman 
to the Soroe family, to the grieving Soroe family. Several years after this death, in that island, that so-called paradise that these paid agents are painting, these people that are talking to you as student union officers, look at their faces. You have an idea of who should be a student. These are bourgeoisies. These are people who are agents of these institutions who are paid to do a job. They are on a mission to lure Nigerians, in, lure Nigerians into their untimely death in the name of schooling in North Cyprus. I'd like you to respond to all yes. the allegations mm -hmm. that obviously you are recruiting Nigerians for these schools to come to a death zone. And you're paid. Right. Uh, now, I, I, I think I would deserve apologies from the Honorable uh, the Chairman, uh, Mr. Sabike, and also the human rights activists, because it went to personal, and I mean, uh, and I, I had them calling uh, my name. He was talking about faces. And now when you refer to a death zone, I, I would also uh, demand an apology from you to, to refer to. I always advocate for investigative journalism. Mrs. Abike has never been here, and uh, she just sat down here. Okay, there are certain facts that we've not mentioned on air because there are certain things she cannot say to a living parent. The, late, the, the mother of the late Ibrahim uh, Bell, we sent our condolences, and I did personally. I was with her, helped her throughout the procedure. I took her from, uh, I took her to the hotel, to the police. I did all of that with her. I was with her for three good days, and I, I didn't have enough sleep, so I have labor in this and to come and hear lies being spread out even to even from a, a government official is, is, a, is a disturbing thing first of all can the federal government fight against itself no platform is sending students here it's not just agents that are sending federal government students are here i i've seen from i i also uh watch uh i've seen observe how uh madam abike is fighting with federal government itself because it's, it's an indication that uh, she does not know who she's representing at all. You are supposed to represent the federal government. I also look at the issue with Minister of Information. Why is the federal government fighting itself? So it's not. I'm, I'm not uh, trying to defend that there is nothing going on uh, in that regard. But what I'm out to say is that lies have been spread, and it's not portraying the true picture of what this country is.